It's Metacosis Perfectionalis once again resuming our discussion about pulmonology lectures. I have a playlist on my channel called Pulmonology. These videos are intended to be watched in order. Today I'll talk about acute epiglottitis. It's an emergency situation, so remember your ABC. Airway first, breathing, circulation. What does itis mean? Itis mean inflammation, and this is an acute inflammation of the epiglottis, or the supraglottic part of the larynx. All right, so itis, what do you expect? Redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. So here's the story. Mama will come to you with a four-year-old drooling baby who's trying to stay still. His voice is muffled. His stridor is inspiratory. He's short of breath, feverish, but not coughing. And the naive doctor goes like this. Okay, sweetheart, open your mouth and let me examine your throat. Say, ah. Shut up. We don't examine the throat in acute epiglottitis, honey. It's an emergency situation, honey. You can close the airway, honey. Your physical exam will kill the kid, honey. So what should I do? This is the topic of today's video. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, and let's get started. Acute epiglottitis is a freaking emergency. Acute inflammation of the epiglottis. What kind of acute inflammation? It's usually a cellulitis of the supraglottic tissue. Epidemiology, two to seven year old age kid. And in children, the cause is usually a bacterial infection, Haemophilus influenza B to be specific. The kid is usually non-immunized because we have a vaccine against this Haemophilus influenza B. If you have a kid with acute epiglottitis, he's probably not vaccinated. And if you are listening to me right now, please vaccinate your kid. We're not even talking about vaccines today, but you see, vaccines are important. And as Daniel Patrick Moynihan said, you are entitled to your own opinion. You're not entitled to your own facts. Haemophilus influenza B will secrete LPS, endotoxin, lipopolysaccharides. Why? Because the stupid Haemophilus influenza is a gram-negative bacteria. Okay, if it's not Haemophilus influenza B, what else? Untypable Haemophilus influenza, which means it's not type A, it's not type B, it's untypable. Staph and strep. In adults, it's usually group A strep. Why? Do you remember? Group A beta hemolytic streptococcus, which involves the tonsils, which is very close to the epiglottis. And then, baby, it can cause acute rheumatic fever and it can also cause post streptococcal glomerulonephritis if you remember this you are excellent and of course haemophilus influenza b still exists first let me draw the larynx for you okay here we go false vocal cords true vocal cords and then this area same thing on the other side false and then true and then this area this area is called infraglottic region. This is called supraglottic region. And on top of everything lies the great epiglottis. So epiglottitis is inflammation of this kind of thing. Early fever and sore throat. It's acute inflammation. Late dysphagia, which is difficulty swallowing. Odinophagia, which is painful swallowing, which will lead to drooling. Drooling is the result of the fact that the kid cannot swallow. Respiratory distress, that's why he's cyanotic here, he's blue. But there is no cough, and this is a big deal. Let me say it in some words of wisdom. Acute epiglottitis is a clinical triad of respiratory distress, dysphagia, and drooling. There you go. And if you look at this kid, he's holding the table. He's trying to, like, stay still because he's focusing on his breathing. He's trying to maintain the airways. He's, like, four year old or something. And, but then he's drooling. He's not coughing. Does he have fever? Yes. And sometimes he is slightly leaning forward and we call this the tripod position. Signs. First, the general look. Is he looking ill or is he looking well? He's looking ill. Okay, it's an acute inflammation. Restlessness, drooling. He's sitting still. By restlessness, I mean he's, he's irritable. I don't mean he's jumping over the table. He's not. He's standing still. Why? He's sitting still and leaning forward, holding himself he needs to breathe carefully. High grade fever. So if you're talking Fahrenheit, it's like 104 or something. If you're talking Celsius, 
40 plus. So four here and four here, that's how I remember it. Increased respiratory rate, absolutely, tachypnea. What's the normal respiratory rate? It's between 10 and 18. If you say 20, 20 is too high. Ask any pulmonologist, 20 is normal, ah, uh, no. But your physiology textbook, which is stupid, means it's 10 to 20 or 12 to 20. Shut up, 20 is hyper. It's tachypnic, 20 is not normal. However, in kids, respiratory rate can be slightly higher than adults. But he's probably four year old, so tachypnia here is gonna be like maybe 30. Increased heart rate, absolutely. He's toxic, man. Inspiratory strider. <gasps> Something like this. Neck intercostal retraction. This is a sign of respiratory fatigue. Muffled voice. Some people call it potato voice. There are hungry pathologists all over the world. Complications. Acute epiglottitis is an emergency. It can close the airway leading to asphyxiation. Diagnosis clinically. Do not perform a physical exam, please, dummy. You're wasting your time in an emergency, which is stupid. You might close the airway, which is more stupid. So don't do it. So what should I do? If the diagnosis is clear clinically, you go ahead and intubate and secure the airway. If it's not clear, you can order a lateral chest x-ray of the neck. You'll find a thumbprint sign, which is a fancy word for an enlarged epiglottis. Please use your amazing search engine to search for a thumbprint sign on a lateral x-ray of the neck and you will never forget it. Treatment, emergency, A, B, C, airways first, so maintain the airway. Please call the anesthesiologist because there's acute inflammation, redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. When you try to insert the tube, um, you will not find the trachea or the airway because it's a hot, red mess, redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. Please call the expert. If there is no anesthesiologist in the freaking hospital and you are alone, you should do it. It's an emergency, baby. Once you secure the airway and you're super sophisticated, you can perform the physical exam after you secure the freaking airway. Antibiotics such as ciftriaxone, dexamethasone, which is a steroid because steroids are the most famous and effective anti-inflammatory drugs, humidified air, oxygen, and IV fluids. Why ciftriaxone? Because ciftriaxone is a third generation cephalosporin with a great gram negative coverage and that nasty Haemophilus influenza B is a freaking gram-negative bacteria. Okay, some nonsense. What's the difference between strider and wheezing? In reality, strider is a special type of wheezing, but let's just have some fun. Strider is usually upper airway, so this kid, epiglottize, it's strider, it's not wheezing. Strider can happen during inspiration, expiration, or both. In case of acute epiglottides, it's inspiratory. Wheezing, same thing, expiration, inspiration, or both. And example here is asthma and COPD. You're gonna compare between them, that's fine, but please don't remember, strider is a special type of wheezing. They are kind of the same. The only difference for me is this is upper airway, this is lower airway, that's about it. So narrowing off upper airway structures, lower airway structures, BS. Strider, inspiratory, expiratory, or both, inspiratory, expiratory, or both. This is more commonly inspiratory, this is more commonly expiratory, who cares? Both of them are high pitched because the Strider is a type or a subtype of wheezing. So if this is high pitch, this is high pitch or high frequency if you are sophisticated in physics. And if the frequency is high, the wavelength is gonna be low. Okay, cases here, examples here and here, I don't care. Types of strider, we have inspiratory strider, expiratory or biphasic, which means both inspiratory and expiratory. Inspiratory strider, such as acute epiglottitis, a collapse of tissue above the vocal cord, no kidding. False vocal cord, true vocal cord, infraglottic area. False, true, infraglottic area. Supraglottic area, epiglottis on the top. So it's above the vocal cord. I didn't lie to you. Expiratory strider when you breathe out, a problem further down the trachea, and this is known as wheezing. Biphasic strider, narrowing of the subglottis, which is here below the vocal cords. And it's usually fixed upper airway obstruction, and this could be cancer by phasing because cancer is just gonna stay here. When you inspire, when you expire, it's there, baby. It's nasty. The way I remember it is by phasic is BS. It's cancer. It's horrible. Be honest. You're struggling to learn Legionella, Mycoplasma, Pseudomonas, Rhinovirus, Staph, and Strypt, and E. coli. Check out this website. It's called Picmonic. The link is in the description below. You will never regret it. 
Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and join the tribe. Hit the bell to get notified. Follow me on Facebook and please support my channel on Patreon. I'll send you my notes, my cases, and even the slides of this video and every other video. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snails, where medicine makes perfect sense.